Hi guys, how are you all doing? So, uh, good evening. Good evening. So, uh, so uh, I feel like a radio presenter with the, the, the mic, the headsets on, but it's the only way you can do this uh, with the, the setup that we've got. So, um, so anyway, so who's excited about tonight's live? I'm definitely excited. Uh, yep. So, so uh, we're coming live all the way from, well, from Spain and coming from India, Bangalore. So uh, very, very excited uh, to have Artie on uh, the, the, our, our first live from India. Yeah, it's cool, isn't First it? First of many, hopefully. Te- technology. So we had a little bit of a techie problem before we came on there. David was uh, pulling his hair out, but we've, we've got back there, haven't yeah. we? You can see him. <laughs> He's not got much hair left. <laughs> so so um, I'm, go- I'm going to go away and have myself a, um, a, sh- a blood shower. pressure tablet. And uh, I'm going to, well, Walt, this will just pop you and Hearty on. Yes. How does that okay. sound? Thank you, Mr. Technical Man. <laughs> Don't mention it. Uh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> now the house is falling apart. So, uh, so there we go. So there's Artie there. So we've got Artie Murji. Artie Murji, yes, yes, uh, from Sweet Symphony, and uh, you're coming live from Bangalore. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Paul? Yes, I, I'm good. It's, it's it's quite hot here, but I suppose it's quite hot where you are just now as well. It's we'll be hitting the forties today. Oh, it's been raining actually over here for quite a few uh, uh, days. Oh, okay. So that must be very good for yeah. your um, your special pa- flower paste. Yes, it's putting it to test. <laughs> <laughs> so um so uh, so i've got an interesting story so uh, myself and uh, Artie, uh we first made contact uh, when i was teaching over in bangalore How, was that about three three years ago about three years ago yeah. yes and yeah. uh, i was uh, teaching i can't remember was it, the, was it a christmas cake i was teaching i think it was maybe a christmas cake or something and uh, unfortunately i wasn't feeling uh, very well and uh, uh, Artie and her husband came over along to take me out for dinner, and uh, I was so I felt so bad that I had to had to um, turn down the invite because I had to go back to my hotel room. Um, but um, ever since that 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 moment that we we, we talked, um, you've always been in my mind, uh, obviously with your your skills, and uh, you know hopefully one day I get to come back to India and we can go out for out for dinner. <laughs> that that would be nice. So, um, so, um, so, just if you just give us a little bit of a history about yourself, Artie. So, how, how long have you been sort of in the industry? I have been uh, taking for the past five years now. Five years. Wow. So you're obviously a very quick, a quick learner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What to do is also uh, of my passion uh, for sugar flies. I just took to it like fish to water. Wow, that's amazing. And and did did you do something in your previous life that was arty? Uh, I I come from a family of art. Both my parents are artists, so I've always been surrounded by art. And uh, oh, I nice. used to uh, oil paintings and uh, uh, wooden murals. You should come home and uh, see some of the work. Oh, that sounds nice. I'd like that definitely. That sounds that sounds like a that that's a that's a date. <laughs> and. Yeah, um, <laughs> and just on your right hand side of your shoulder uh, you've got a, a spectacular display and that was your uh, display from last year's Cake International yes yes which won me the first place uh, gold in yep. the firework uh, team uh, category Un- unbelievable and to think that you managed to transport that all the way from Bangalore to, to Birmingham and, and back again is just incredible <laughs> Yes, I was very scared about that. Um, but I carried a lot of uh, extra class, but uh, surprisingly, uh, not even a petal broke. So I was yes. really happy about that. So that, that. That must be because you used your own brand, your your special flower paste. Yes. Yes. yes I did. <laughs> so, um, so tonight you're going to be showing everyone how to make a begonia leaf. Is that right? Yes, and even that has been uh, included in my uh, competition piece. Yeah, so that's the three leaves that are coming down the front. They're so beautiful, aren't they? The, the yeah. colour and the yeah. texture and the, the, just the pattern on them is really, really nice. So uh, I, should, I should have a box of your, your flower paste here. So uh, so, so you, you just launched your flower paste, was it two or three months ago? Yes, about two and a half months ago. Two and a half months ago, yep. And, um, yeah. And it's just incredible. I mean, 
I get a lot of samples sent over um, with different brands, um, and uh, I'm going to be honest. Um, you know, when I, when I started using it, cause I, I don't do a lot of sugar flowers. I'm not I'm not in your legal. Your your stuff's incredible, but I still make sugar flowers. And I, I thought, oh, I probably won't, I thought I'll not be able to tell the difference really between a good paste and a bad paste. However, as soon as I started rolling out your your paste. I could tell instantly it was going to be a, an amazing paste. And, um, and what I like about it is you can roll it out so, so thin and it just doesn't give you any problems. Because a lot of paste, when you roll it out so thin, it just flops and it just doesn't hold very well. But I don't know what magic powers are in this paste. <laughs> but it just, it just works incredibly well. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm very, very thrilled uh, with the paste uh, and thrilled with the, uh, the response I'm getting from everybody who's used it. Uh, it, it really makes me feel, uh, you know, validated that uh, the space is really, uh, uh, you know, it is something uh, uh, good. Um, and I always wanted a paste that, uh, that would uh, uh, do away with the negatives of uh, the traditional gum paste and i'm so happy that i could do it with this paste oh, that, yeah, would, yeah. yeah oh no it's it's, it's the, the sunflower that i made about two or three weeks ago is sat in the, the kitchen and uh considering how hot it's how hot it is here in spain um i expected it to start to to wilt or to not and it's just holding itself like it was made yeah. yesterday. It's uh, really, really. I can't. I can't big it up, big it up enough. So, uh, so congratulations. Um, everyone needs Thank to buy the paste. Thank <laughs> you so much for all the support uh, I've got from you, uh, Paul. Really, really appreciate it. Oh no, no, it's it's great. So, um, so, so I suppose what we should do now is is, is hand hand you over. Yes. So we're going to hand you mm -hmm. over now. Uh, I'll just be in the background. And uh, if anyone's got any questions, I'll be looking at the questions and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll butt in, if you don't mind, throughout the demonstration and I'll ask if any questions. All right? Sure. Okay. Have a good one, Artie. Okay. Thank you. Over to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. So uh, today I'll be introducing you to my uh, flower paste, which was launched about two and a half months uh, ago. And uh, like I was telling, um, I wanted to do away with the negatives of uh, the, um, the regular or the traditional gum paste that we are so used to uh, because um, I wanted something uh, that, that had all the strengths of uh, the gum paste and something that did away with all the negatives. So um, this, uh, a little about my flower paste. Um, I have two uh, variants. I have uh, the original and I have uh, the humid variant. So the original works uh, uh, perfectly well in um, summers and winters. And uh, especially in India, the monsoons are really bad. So uh, during that, uh, the humid variant works uh, beautifully. Um, uh, uh, what else? About the paste, yes, uh, it is highly hu uh, humid uh, resistant. And yes, like <clears throat> Paul was telling, it really rolls very thin, especially when uh, you want to make uh, uh, flowers like the rose or the ranunculus, where you want to show the beauty of the flower uh, by uh, having really re thin and realistic uh, petals. This is where the paste uh, comes into the picture and it really helps you roll the petals very, very thin. And uh, it stays flexible uh, for a very long time. So uh, what it does is uh, one of the biggest problems when we work with uh, gum paste uh, flowers is that uh, there's a lot of breakage, especially when we are trying to assemble uh, the, uh, the petals together or when we're trying to put the flowers together into an arrangement, most of the breakage has happened. Now, if the paste is, uh, if the petal is uh, flexible, we can do away with this negative. So that's a big plus about uh, this uh, paste that it stays uh, flexible. Uh, you might find that in uh, summer uh, or where there is uh, very less humidity, it might become a little firm or it might become hard. Now, you can always uh, counter that by uh, keeping it in front of uh, steam for a little uh, while and uh, uh, 
say about uh, seven, eight seconds and it uh, gets back its uh, flexibility. So you can play around with the flexibility if you, uh, especially uh, for people uh, who are not used to using a flexible paste. I have a lot of uh, uh, beginners who uh, message me saying that, oh, the paste is not drying up because the petals are still flexible. Uh, that's because they are not uh, used to having a petal that will bend when they touch and they're waiting for it to dry up in order to uh, dust it. So uh, what they can do and what I advise them to do is that you can work in an AC environment and what happens in such a, a situation because of the lack of humidity, it becomes hard. And then it's, uh, you know, till you get used to the flexible medium, you can try uh, that as a solution. And when you bring it back to a uh, normal atmosphere, it regains its flexibility. So you can play around with the flexibility of uh, the space. Again, um, uh, the flowers, because you use so much, uh, so less of the paste because it can be rolled uh, so very thin, uh, the flowers turn out really light. And this really helps when you have uh, to arrange multiple uh, flowers on your cake. So uh, that is an another plus uh, for this paste. And uh, yes, uh, it does not form cracks when you are uh, working with it. So this uh, especially happens when you are working with uh, a flower on which there are multiple uh, petals, especially like again, a rose or a ranunculus. Usually what used to happen is when I want to thin the edges of uh, the petals, the, the edges would start cracking. So with this paste, you, you can avoid that because the paste is, uh, it does not crack. It gives you a lot of working time. And this also helps uh, those who take a lot of extra time to put in finer details or even for people who are a little slow in uh, making their flowers. So this paste really helps them uh, to take their time and uh, make build their uh, uh, flowers. And uh, yes, uh, a very big plus for me especially is the quality that it uh, blends very well with water. So I used to always wonder uh, how uh, people who use cold porcelain could get seamless, uh, uh, seamless uh, joints uh, between stems and between uh, petals and uh, which was not possible with the regular uh, gum paste. But with this uh, flower paste, you can use a little bit of water and you can blend uh, the uh, joints to get a seamless uh, effect. So this is a huge, huge uh, plus for me. It helped me in making my bamboo sticks uh, uh, seamless. So uh, for me, that, uh, that works uh, really well. And uh, it veins beautifully. Again, um, uh, there are some of the veiners uh, which I had, which uh, would not give out the veins as well uh, with the regular gum paste. And I had, in fact, kept them aside. And uh, just to try it out with this uh, flower paste, uh, I, I tried them out. And uh, to my uh, pleasant surprise, I found that uh, they, they work really well with this. So even the faintest uh, veins do come out really beautifully with uh, this uh, flower paste. And uh, yes, it colors beautifully. So uh, you do not have to put in too much effort in trying to wrap the, the dust into your uh, petal or your leaves. So it takes the colors beautifully, even if you want to color the paste or if you want to apply dust on your uh, petals or leaves. Um, I have uh, some exciting news to share with you. Uh, and I thought this would be the ideal uh, launch pad for uh, that. So I have come out with uh, three colors. So this is the moss green and uh, I have fuchsia and I have scarlet red. So these are the three colors that I've just uh, come out with and the, uh, these will be available uh, for sale in India and in the UK for now. And uh, by the end of uh, this month in Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and uh, by mid-September in the US. 
So exciting news uh, for me. I do hope uh, you like them. And uh, so that was about uh, my flower paste. Now let me just uh, start uh, with uh, uh, the demo. So today I will be showing you how to make this begonia leaf, uh, which I have used in my competition piece. Uh, the theme was fireworks, and uh, I felt that uh, the veins of uh, the begonia, they, they kind of uh, imitated the movement of uh, the, the fireworks. Uh, uh, so I thought it would be a very apt, uh, um, uh, apt uh, leaf to include in my competition uh, piece. Um, for this, uh, what I have done since it is uh, monsoons here and it's been raining uh, throughout the day today, um, I am going to be using my humid variant. Um, what I have done is I have just colored my white paste with just a hint of uh, eucalyptus dust. It is uh, from Edible Art. Uh, just a very little tiny bit. I don't want to color my uh, paste uh, uh, too bright. Uh, so this is the base. Uh, like any um, gum paste, what you need to do, uh, I, I will be uh, between uh, calling it a gum paste and flower paste because it is uh, one and the same. Uh, I named it as a flower paste so that uh, it is obvious for people as to what it is meant to be used for. So um, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the gum paste, flower paste, and just knead it between my fingers so that it becomes nice and pliable. Uh, if you find that uh, it is getting sticky, then you can use either shortening or you can use uh, corn flour to get the stickiness out. Here, because it is very humid, I do need to use a uh, corn flour. And uh, just an, a, a small tip that I would like to share with everybody. Uh, when you are using uh, shortening, please uh, be very uh, careful as to how much sh uh, shortening you use. Because sometimes what happens that the shortening goes and it gets settled in your flower paste. And uh, when you are trying to dust your uh, petal or your leaf, you might find that it goes on as blotches. That is because the shortening has uh, been used in excess and it has settled in your flower paste in uh, certain areas. So you can use uh, the shortening, but just be careful as to how much you are using. You can probably alternate between uh, using the short and uh, the uh, uh, corn flour if you want. So right now I'm just going to take a fair amount of uh, the flour paste and just put a little bit of uh, corn flour on it to make it easy to roll it. And then I'm just going to roll it. Uh, the begonia leaf is quite a fleshy leaf. So I'm going to roll it to about mm uh, of thickness. I think that should be uh, good enough. So this is the thickness that I'm going to roll it to. And uh, then what I have here, these are... Uh, Begonia vein, veiners from uh, Robert Haynes' uh, collection. Beautiful, beautiful uh, veiners uh, with beautiful veins on them. So I do not have a cutter uh, for uh, this uh, begonia leaf, and I don't need it because I can make use of uh, the veiner itself to get the impression on my paste. So what I do is I take it and very lightly press it down. I hope everybody can uh, see me. I press it down and lift it up, take my cutting wheel, and I just cut it a little inside the impression because the paste is going to spread out and I don't want it coming out of the veiner too much. So I'm just going to, and I don't want it to be too even, so I just try and make it a little wobbly. Put the rest of the 
flower paste inside a plastic wrap. So there. Now I'm going to put it on my foam pad and again take a little bit of corn flour and dust it on it. Now this time I'm not going to use a Dresden tool or a ball tool to uh, soften the edges. I'm going to use my fingers to do that. Because if I do use uh, the Dresden tool or the ball tool, what can happen is that uh, it can leave an impression and I don't want that. I just want the edges to be just softened a bit so my fingers can do that very well. There you go. So once I am happy with that, what I'm going to do is for the time being, I'm just going to place this within a plastic flap so that it stays fresh. Keep it aside. And then I have, I have 22 gauge wires, which I've cut into half. What I'm going to do now, because this, I cannot really um, wire the petal in the traditional method again, because the wire needs to go in a, in a curved fashion. And uh, it might not really take the whole uh, thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to twiddle a little bit of paste. I have three bits of the wires here, 22 gauge. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the paste and I'm going to twiddle with my thumb and my middle finger I'm going to hold the paste and I'm going to coax it upwards and take away the excess. Now, once hey. I've done that. Hi, Arti. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, we're just having a problem with the second camera. The, it's the, the quality is not so good. Um, so okay. it's maybe we're going to stick to the front camera at the moment. Just uh, okay. so so if you just hold things up to the front camera just now, if that's okay. Sure. So can I continue? Yep, go for it. So, so I'm going to turn the paste on the wire and take off the excess. And once I've done that, uh, this can be about um, four, four centimeter. And I'll use the heel of my palm to just even it out. So my first wire is ready. Now the for the second and the third one, I'm not going to twiddle the pa paste too much. I'm just going to twiddle it, say, uh, uh, to the length of about uh, three centimeters because I don't want them to be too long. So yes, maybe a little less and then roll it again with my palm. I have the second one ready. Now I'm going to take a little more of the paste and do the same with the third one. I'm just rolling it between my thumb and my middle finger and pushing the paste, extra paste upwards and taking away the excess. Once I've done that, I'm going to make sure that I have a little paste on the tip so that it will blend with the rest of the paste. Just make sure about that. So once I have all the three ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape them all together. I'm just giving it a slight bend so that they don't stick to each other while I'm taping it. There you go. And I'm going to use full width tape, brown color. Take a little bit of the tape, snip off a fair amount. And then holding all the three wires together from the base, I'm going to hold it, press, and then hold the tape 
at an angle and then roll it with my other hand so that the tape bounces around the wires nicely. I'll go back on it just to give it a little more thickness. I'm doing this. And maybe once more. Ar Arti, that's the side camera working again. All right. So here you go. So I have the three wires put nicely. Just cut the extra tape away. And once I have this ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cut uh, leaf impression that I had put away in my plastic uh, pad there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my vayner, dust it nicely, take off the excess dust, and then I'm going to take the wire and try and just coax it, bend it a little bit, just so that it sits on the main veins that are already there. You can see these veins. So I'm going to try and coax the wires to sit on these main veins. So I'm going to just take it and place them and adjust the wire so that it is sitting snugly on those veins and then I will take my glue. I hope everybody can see it. So just a little bit of glue with a brush and I'm just going to put it on top of the wire on which I have twiddled the paste. Not on the not on the vayner, just on the wire. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my leaf, which I had cut and kept, and I'm going to place this on the wire. Yeah, like so. And don't forget to dust your paste again. Just to make sure that it's not going to stick on the vayner because it's quite quite a heavy vayner so we do not want the paste to get uh, accumulated in the crevices and not come off. So I'm going to just take this and gently, gently, very gently, I'm going to massage it. I'm going to take my time because the beauty of begonia is in the veins that are there on the leaf. So I'm not going to be to get the impression. That, that's us now live again, Artie. Um, I'll just wait for some people to come on. Mm -hmm. So it's showing, showing everything at our end. Can you, can you see it, Paul? Yeah. Yeah, so I think we're, yeah, we've got one person on. Yeah. That's, that's Paul. That's me. I thought there was someone mm -hmm. before me. Yeah, so... Nobody interrupted. Uh, we, we don't know what happened. The, the signal just dropped. Um, but that's okay. that's everything connected up again. Okay. So, okay. yeah, we, we've got people starting to come back on. So it may be a good All idea right. just to quickly remind people what where we finished and then just take it from there. Okay, okay. okay. Sure. Thank you. So, yes. So I, I just showed you how to make that the leaf uh, using uh, three wires to we, we twiddled some paste onto the wire placed it on the vayner into the uh, main uh, veins and then we put the cut uh, uh, leaf on it and pressed the top vayner on that so that we got the impression properly on that over here like this if you can see, I have three of the wires behind there, which has blended with the main uh, veins. And then I could just manipulate the wires to just give it some movement. And to further give it a 
some more movement. I'm going to use the foil which was crushed so that it can be pliable and then bend it a little bit and let it sit and dry. So this takes about, uh, if it is not uh, very humid like it is over here, it, it does dry up in about four to five hours. But if it, it is uh, very humid, I would ask you to keep it uh, for uh, a day and then uh, try and dust it. So I have a few uh, of the leaves uh, ready over here. So I'll, I'll just show you how to color this beautiful uh, begonia because the main uh, uh, beauty of the begonia is in the vibrant colors that are there and the veins uh, that show so brilliantly uh, because of the veiner. So what I'm going to do is here I have uh, the eucalyptus which I use to tint my flower paste that I have white. I have uh, French lilac. I have volia and I have jazzberry over here and I'm going to uh, color it in layers again so that I, I don't have uh, any patches on my uh, begonia leaf. So we st first start off with the base color. I'm going to mix my eucalyptus with the white like so. I just want a hint of the eucalyptus on my leaf. So I'm just going to take the dust and without thinking too much, I'm just going to put it over my leaf. Like this. We're back again. Sorry, we, we lost you for a wee second there. <laughs> I don't know what's going on tonight. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, and I'm just putting a base color on the leaf uh, with uh, eucalyptus uh, mixed with wild. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lightest color, which is the lilac, French lilac, and I'm just going to color from the edges so I, I take my brush from the edge and then move it inwards. Just like this. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Just like so. All over uh, the edges of the leaf. There you go. Now once I've done that, I'm going to dust off the extra that has come in the middle of uh, the leaf. And then I'm going to move on to the next color, which is Voilia. And I'm just going to again roll my brush in the color. And again, from the edge, I'm going to go into it. So here, what I'm doing is I'm just layering my colors so that they build up and I have a, some depth added to the leaf. If I were to color it with only one color, then it will be very flat but I want my leaf to look as realistic as possible. So that is why I'm building up the color to the color, that, which is the final shade that I have over here. So again, I'm moving my brush from the tip inwards so that it is most intense at the tip and then it fades inwards. Like this. Again, dust off the excess. 
I'm going to do the same here. So any questions for me, Paul? Paul, you're there? Yeah. Okay. Oh. oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. so Val's just asking, are, are these pre-prepared petals that you're dusting? Yes, they are, because they need to dry up for about uh, four or five hours. Four, four or five hours? That, yes, yes. Yeah. And it's okay. very, very humid over here, so I can't uh, really work on it. Okay, that's great. And um, just let, uh, some people, are, they're hearing an echo coming from the, the mic, um, but unfortunately we can't change that. So uh, if you could just please bear with us, guys. Uh, no. All right, so now I'll move on to the last color, which is uh, jazzberry. And I'm again doing the same. I'm building up my color. Once I have all the three shades on my leaf, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lightest shade and just go on the main veins that are there, just so that I exaggerate them, like this. And again, all the extra dust has to be taken off. Sorry, uh, you shouldn't be blowing it. Uh, you need to use a blower uh, to do that. So let's pretend nobody saw me do that. Now, on the back, I'm again going to take, I'm going to take the second color because the back is going to be a very intense color. It's not going to have the light. The whole back is going to be a, a purple uh, lilac shade so i'm just taking the voilia color and i'm just just covering the whole back with it like so arty we've got some people asking where you buy your dust from which brand? Uh, I use uh, mostly uh, Sugarine brand. They, they have lovely shades. I'm also trying to develop a few uh, more colors with them. Uh, so they will be coming out with more uh, shades. Uh, otherwise, I also use Edible Art, Sugar Flare, Diamond Dust. Oh, so you, you've got quite a very... very and uh, can you buy yeah. them on, on the website or the, the Sugarine uh, one? Yeah. You can buy uh, the Shigreen uh, uh, dust on the Shigreen website. The Shigreen website, all right, okay, thanks. Yes, yes. So once I've done uh, the first base coat, I'm just going to again put another coat of uh, the jazzberry on the back because I want the whole back to be quite intense. And this goes on quite quickly. Like you can see, I'm not really rubbing my uh, my brush into it uh, too hard. Uh, it, it takes the colors really well and really beautifully. So I think I'm done with the back. And now comes the interesting part. What I'm going to do is I, I want all these veins to come out. And for that, I'm going to use use uh, isopropyl alcohol mixed with aubergine. Now we have mm -hmm. uh, another question uh, that's just come in from Val again. Val's got a lot of questions tonight. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So she's asking, um, why not twiddle uh, the wire with the, the leaf before veining, but veining uh, twice? Is there a reason? I did not vein it twice. I veined it only once. I, I used the veiner the second time when the veins didn't come out very, very well on my side. Oh, sorry. So you don't need to vein it. Oops. 
We're having major sound problems tonight. I think we've lost completely. So, are we back? Oh, yes, you're back. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what I'm doing is I've taken some aubergine in my uh, palate, and I'm going to take a lot of the isopropyl alcohol. It's like a wash that I'm going to give it. If you can see, I've, I've made it like watercolor. Oh, thing. yes. Yep. Yeah. So, I'm just going to take that, mix it well. Sorry, Artie, can I just ask what, what brand of vein are you using tonight? Uh, this is uh, from uh, Robert Haynes. I think I mentioned it uh, in the beginning. This is from Robert Haynes. Beautiful, beautiful veiners. I wow. love his veiners. We've got some people just joining the group, so they're, 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 they missed the starting okay, bit. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, so. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm just adding a little bit of color because I think I added too much of the alcohol. And I'm going to try it out on my leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this very, very light color that I have made and I'm just going to let it run through. And I don't know how much of it you can see. What it does, it, just, it goes on the veins and spreads out almost on its own. Oh, that's cool. You see? Wow. Yeah. That's how so, you do it. Ah. <laughs> The penny, the yes, penny drops. <laughs> so, when I let it take its own course, it's just going to go into all the crevices and show all the little veins that are there in the beautiful vena. So, I'm just going to let it flow on its own. Coax it to go into all the crevices. And I'm going to use gravity to help me. So I'm turning my my leaf so that it flows down. There you go. So now again with this, I'm going to do it in layers because I again want variation in uh, the colors that are coming through in the veins. So I'll probably add a little bit more color into the same solution and let it become a little more darker and then color it again. And because it is isopropyl alcohol, it almost uh, dries up instantaneously. So I don't have to worry about waiting for it to dry up. So once this is done, I'll do the same even to the edges. So there you can see all the veins from the edges also coming out. So I, I enjoy the coloring part the most uh, in flower making because it just brings everything to life. Yeah, but I think it'd be nice if we could have uh, a minion who makes all the petals for us and the leaves for us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I just wish. <laughs> yes. So I think you can see how the color is spreading into the veins. I hope you can see it. Yes, it looks beautiful. So I'm again turning it around so that gravity helps me here and pulls the paint down into all the crevices. There you go. So again, this does not take too much time, but the effect is stunning. I'm surprised at how fast that's came to life. Yes, yes. So, one of my favorite uh, leaves to make when I have to fill up an arrangement because it's so quick to make. Yep. And we're all looking for that, isn't it? Something it's, quick uh, to make. Something quick to, to make, but you can still win gold medals at Cake International. <laughs> 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 So what I'm doing now is just to intensify the solution that I have here. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, the color to the side because this time I don't want it spreading too much. And I'm just going to take the same 
uh, water solution that we had made with the color. And I'm going to add just a little bit to it and then mix it. And then this time I'm not going to take too much color in my brush. I'm going to wipe it and then go and just for the main veins, I'm going to highlight them so that they give a pop. Like so. Now there are hundreds of varieties of begonia, so you can play around with the shades that you want, depending on the shades that uh, work on your arrangement. So in this uh, arrangement for CI, I had most of the colors as uh, red, orange, and pinks, and uh, it was kind of blending all uh, together, and I wanted some pop in the whole thing to catch the eye. To, as a fire focal interest. So that is the reason I decided to have uh, a purple uh, uh, begonias just to give the whole arrangement a pop. And uh, it did work well, I think. Don't you yes. think so? Oh, I think it looks it looks uh, absolutely stunning. I think when, when uh, I was walking down the aisle at Kick International, you, you could spot uh, your display a mile away because it was so... It was like a fire. It really was like a firework of color. Fantastic. Yeah. So there you go. It's already ready. So you can make wow. a bunch of them. And put them on your uh, arrangement any which way you want. Absolutely fantastic. Yes. So you, you make it look so easy. <laughs> it it isn't too difficult. It is quite easy. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, know. It's it's just very very. I think it's just a case of just breaking things down because I think when you look at the, yeah. when, when you sent me the picture, I thought, oh heck, that looks really complicated. Um, but it's amazing how you let the, the, the colour bleed into the veins and it's not, just yes. as, it's not just as difficult as you think. It isn't, it isn't. A lot of people ask me, how did you get all the tiny veins there? Did you use a thin brush to get in? And uh, that's when I thought that maybe this technique will help people uh, figure uh, it out. Yeah, Anna. Oh, no, th thank you very much for for sharing your uh, your skill your skills there. It's just uh, spectacular, isn't it, David? Yeah, oh no, it's lovely, lovely. Yeah, I'm, I'm just the side of Paul. Where am I? Uh, the other side. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. so if anyone's just joining the party, I know some people have just came on board. Uh, this will be live on YouTube. It'll be um, sorry, post on YouTube, yeah. and if you go onto the Cape Flix uh, TV, uh, it'll also be uploaded on there as well. Yeah. What we're going to do because it was in two parts because we had a, a technical issue is we'll just take it off there. We'll do an edit, make it all joined up, and yeah, that that will be posted there. Um, Hopefully tonight, but if not, certainly first thing tomorrow morning. Yeah, so we'll make it all nice and uh, seamless for you. <laughs> all right. I, I just forgot to show everybody uh, how flexible the paste is. Uh, so here are right. my roses that I've made. Yeah, just let's see. Show how, how real wow. they Wow, they actually look real. That's You're going to zoom into that one, David? Yeah. So, there, there we go. go. So this, this is the touch and feel of the paste. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> it's amazing. The good thing is, if you drop the the petal, it just bounces. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't smash. It doesn't smash. Unreal. Just super, super lovely. And am I right in thinking that you've had the thumbs up from Cake International? It is. It's a an official product. Yes. Yes. So I'm thrilled when they. Uh, so I think they're. Uh, prerequisite was that the paste needs to harden at some point of time. And initially when I was making the paste, um, I thought, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I couldn't get it to be flexible throughout because uh, the, in very humid conditions, it, it becomes flexible. But then uh, when it is really, really dry, it, uh, it does dry up. But uh, I think it worked in my advantage because that's the reason it was also allowed in uh, Cake International as a 
uh, a base that can be used for competitions. Yeah, I oh, know that's that's fantastic. It's um, I know oh, it's been it's been just lovely seeing it come together. It just looks fantastic. And um, so uh, and you've been filming some tutorials for us uh, for up and coming. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, can we talk about very... it? Are we allowed to talk about it? Yes, yes we're allowed to talk about it. Yes. Uh, so I've made uh, a tutorial for daffodils and for heliconias uh, for fruit flakes, and I'll be sending them over the day after to uh, you all. Fantastic. And then it's you as to when you want to release it. Oh, that's great. Well, we don't like to give them all away straight away, as you know. So we like to we like to tease it out over the next couple of months. Um, but yes, yeah, so they'll, they'll they'll be out because um, I remember last year it was the um, the first one. It was the your Ponsetia, uh, and it was yeah. a bit of a rush to get it live before Christmas, um, which was yeah. which was nice, which is fun. So yeah, I'm looking forward to watching these ones as well because uh, yeah. uh, you you just got a beautiful way. you your I could watch you making cakes, making flowers all the time. It's just just uh, beautiful. So it's it's been a pleasure oh, having you on. A pleasure having you on board tonight. And um, so, does anyone have any questions before Artie goes to bed? What time is it there now, Artie? Is it? It must be quite late. Uh, I think it is eleven thirty now. Oh gosh! Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, um, so we've got some people asking what paste. So, um, so David, do you want to just flash up the, the paste um, yep. picture again? Yeah. I have two versions. I have uh, the original and yep. the human. So the original is for very dry areas, yeah. And the humid is for uh, humid places, humid uh, conditions. Uh, and the one that you used tonight was the humid one. Yes, because it is very humid over here. It's been raining. It's the monsoon season. And Margaret Ellis is just asking: Can your paste be used in all categories at Cake International, all flower categories? Yes. Yes, yes. yes it, can, it be. can be. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's great, and uh, yeah, everyone just saying thanks very much for uh, for a great Thank demonstration. You so much. It's, it's, it it's, was a pleasure being here on Cake Flicks. Uh, Thank you so much for having me here. No problem, no, no problem. It's been, it's been great fun. So, uh, so I think we're going to end with uh, with your frang frangipani a uh, little uh, quick bite. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so it's been great fun having you, Artie, and hopefully we'll speak to you again soon. Bye bye. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.